little message. Hey, Sarah, so glad you could join today. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, pull up my slides. Just remember, I'm not going to be able to see your guys' comments. I might ask you guys to comment and say things, but I won't be able to see them until we're done. Um, but feel free to um, chat and have conversation as we go. And at the end, we'll have time for questions. So hello. Thank you for joining me today. This is the first time I've ever done a webinar on a weekend, but I pulled the Facebook and Instagram communities for Dietitian Side Hustle. And this was the overwhelmingly, um, you know, this was the time slot everyone picked. So I am grateful that you guys chose to come join me today on Sunday because I know, you know, the weekends, they're full. So I'm really excited to talk to you all about blogging as a business and how you could actually make money blogging. Because I know for me, even just a couple of years, this was such a foreign concept. So a little bit about me, for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Katie Dodd. I'm the owner of Katie Dodd Nutrition, which is made up of three different components. Dietitian Side Hustle is one of my brands. The Geriatric Dietitian is my primary blog side hustle. And then High Calorie Recipes, which is a newer blog that I'm working on building up. So I'm a blogger, a speaker, a mentor, and a leader within the field. And again, just so excited to have all of you here today. So what's on our agenda over the next hour ish. I, I've done this presentation before and I went over an hour. I'm always trying hard to stay on track, but I, just, I get so excited about this topic, but I'll do my best to keep it to an hour, but we might go maybe 15 minutes over. <laughs> so I'm going to um, go over a little bit of introduction. I'm going to tell you more about my story. I'm going to share examples of my actual blog journey. I'm going to talk about numbers, how much money you can make. I'm going to talk about the three steps to start. So you actually know if you're like, oh my gosh, this blogging stuff sounds amazing. I want to do it. You'll be able to know like, how can I do this? And then we are going to have a drawing at the end. So those of you who are on live, we're going to do a drawing and one of you are going to win might be on the nine to five coaching course. And then at the very end, we are going to have some time for Q and a. Mm -hmm. So something that will be coming your way after we are done with this webinar, I will be sending all of you the replay. So if you're like massively taking notes, it's okay. You could catch something later if you miss it. Um, I also have this nice little um, webinar notes I've made for you. So I've really summarized the key points of this webinar. <laughs> into a document for you. So that way you guys can, um, you know, have, have a good picture of everything we covered. And then I created this, this is relatively new. This is a little blogging checklist. So it's got the three steps to start. So it'll actually walk you through, okay, here's what I need to do to actually do the thing. So are you guys ready for this? I'm curious, even though I can't see the chat, I'd love to have you guys engage and talk amongst yourselves. So I'm just curious, how many of you feel like you just don't have you know, enough time to make the money, to pay off your loans, to pay off your debts, to pay your bills and to live that lifestyle you want? I think that's one of the struggle with students and with dietitians. We you know, go to school for this career and we're like, okay, this is amazing but now how do I make ends meet? So I know a lot of you are looking for side hustles and you're looking for ways that you can, you know, make more money with less time. So if that is you, go ahead and comment me in the chat. So the other thing is I want to know how many of you want to make money in your sleep without oh. being patients. Now that is passive income for those of you who are not familiar with it. And we're going to talk more about it, but there's this a whole amazing world in blogging that I'm excited to share with you guys. And I'm doing my best to mute you guys as you come on. So if you have an open mic, um, oh, found the last one. I muted you. We're good. So is this for me? <laughs> I want you guys to start thinking about like, what is your dietitian dream? Why did you become a dietitian? Like, what was that fire in your soul of this is why I want to be a dietitian. This is what I want to do. And then even thinking of like, what do I want to do moving forward? I know some of you are in a job that maybe you don't love and you have these dreams of things that you want to achieve and things you want to become, but I I'm just curious, what is your dream? And then are you dreaming big enough? We live in a day and age where there is limitless possibilities, especially as dietitians online. So my question is, are you dreaming big enough? I love blogging because it's a low cost business and it's one that anyone can tackle. It's very low overhead. It's not like you have an in-person practice and you have to worry about, you know, paying the rent and the, all the bills. It's, it's a very low cost just to start a blog. So what to expect, <laughs> you are going to learn how to blog as a business. <laughs> and we do that by bringing in multiple streams of income on your own time from the comfort of your own home without seeing patients. I mentioned that there are limitless opportunities for making money and impact online as a dietitian. So 
I'm really excited to go through this webinar with you guys today to hopefully open your eyes to things that maybe you didn't know were possible before. Um, but then also just to get you guys excited, those of you who are like, oh my gosh, yes, blogging is my thing. This is what I want to do. So if any of you at the end are like, yes, I absolutely want to blog and you want more help and support in doing that, I will be having an offer at the end. I won't be talking too much about it, but I will be sharing that for those of you who want to continue working together and learning more. So let me tell you a little bit about my story. So I have a full-time job that I love. I work for the Department of Veteran Affairs in home care. I've been doing that since 2008 and I've been side hustling since 2014. But I will tell you in my side hustle, I had no interest in seeing patients. I did that my full-time job. I didn't wanna do it in my side hustle. Now I was doing a lot of work like freelance writing and doing webinars and I had very, very small goals. My goals were to make $300 a month. I was like, well, that'll pay a bill, right? Like that, that's all I want. Just, just a little bit, something extra. But I will tell you, I was spending my time and my talents building someone else's dream. You know, when I was getting paid to write papers and to do webinars, I was making, you know, I was getting paid one and done, but I was making even more money for that company. And I started to realize, oh, wait, I can create stuff for my own brand and continue to make more money and more impact. So I eventually learned how to blog, not as a hobby, but as a business. Now, before we dive into this, I just want to introduce a, you know, very basic concept of how to make money period, but how to make money blogging. And this is very oversimplified, but I think it paints a good picture for us to understand how this blogging business works. So to make money, you need two things. You need something to sell and someone to sell it to. So that's something to sell, especially in the online world could look like eBooks, digital handouts, courses, um, affiliate incomes where you're selling products from other people, ad revenue, people go to your blog and they see ads and you get paid based on that. It could also be sponsored content where you're working with brands or companies. And it could also be freelance work because you know people find you because you have this amazing blog and they want you to you know work with them. So those are the ways that you can make something to sell. And before I move on, I do want to introduce the concept of passive income and active income. So many people are familiar with active income, even if you haven't heard it called that, but active income is what we traditionally learn in school. It is hourly pay for hourly work. Think of a salary job. If you do freelance work, it's contract work. You get a freelance, like you get a contract gig, maybe to write a paper, you write that paper. Once you're done, you get paid and you don't continue to make money on it. Where passive income is where you create something once you do have to market it and create systems to continue to have people coming into your world but then you are able to sell those things on autopilot. So the things over here without stars are all sources of passive income. You create your ebook one and done. If you have systems in place, you can continue to sell it day after day. Now the bottom two, these are active income. You do have to trade time for money when you're doing some sponsored content and freelance work. But the beauty of you know, blogging is that there's lots of opportunities to create passive income where you do the work once and you know, over time you continue to make money. So when it comes to something to sell, we also have to have someone to sell it to. We could have the most amazing products and services in the world, but if we don't have humans in front of us who want to buy it, we are not going to make money. So when it comes to finding someone to sell, there's a few ways you could do this. Um, obviously, I love blogging. That's what I do. You know, there's also social media, email marketing for those of you who, you know, want to work with people in person. There are lots of ways to reach people but you can also use a combination. I do use a blog, social media, and email marketing. So for those of you who aren't super familiar, familiar with what a blog is, a blog is simply an article on your website. And it's something that comes up when you do an online search. Now I'm sure almost all of you on the call have Googled something at some point. When you Google a topic, 10 pages show up on the first page of Google. You pick the one that sounds like the best fit for you. And you are actually reading a blog article on someone's website. Now I will say that blogging is a long-term game. <laughs> gosh, I don't even know the number, but thousands of people create websites every single day. And when we look at the big search engines, I talk about Google, like 90% of people use Google. Google wants to make sure that when you search something on their platform, it pulls up a real good website. If not, why would you come back? So for that reason, they don't even start listing brand new baby websites for quite a while because they want to make sure that, you know, this is good quality content. So it can take anywhere from six to nine months for Google to actually pick up your brand new baby blog. So that's why I mentioned that blogging is a, a long-term game. You can push publish on your blog. It could take anywhere from six to nine months for Google to pick you up. And then you'll continue to work on building that traffic. But it's an amazing way to reuse content for years to come, bringing in massive traffic without posting every day or getting burnt out. <laughs> 
I like to give the picture of social media. When we create these amazing like posts on social media, we write all the stuff that most people aren't reading. They might like double click or comment, but they're usually not reading in detail all the time we put in those comments. And the way the algorithms work on social media <laughs> is that it's kind of here today, gone tomorrow. You know, you see it today, it scrolls down your news food and feed and people won't see it unless they go back to your page and are maybe kind of digging back in your history. And even when you have people who are following you, how the algorithms work, not everyone's going to see that content. So you're taking this time to make this amazing content on social media, but it's here today, gone tomorrow. When you take the time to put amazing content on your blog and you do the right strategy, people can continue to find it, you know, day after day, week after week, month after month. So I will say it's all about timing. <laughs> if you have no audience, then no one's going to buy from you. And I think that's pretty basic and it makes sense. I talked about to sell stuff, you need two things, something to sell, someone to sell it to. So if you do decide to move into the blogging game, the first objective you have is going to be to build your audience. You want to put your time into building that traffic so lots of people are coming to the blog. Then strategically over time, you will build income sources. And I will say you might not know what your audience really wants right now. And over time, if you do blog, then people will tell you what what they want. If you listen, that's how I made my first product online. People ask me for it. And we don't want to waste our time creating products or services that no one wants or will buy. So I'm going to share with you guys some examples of how I actually make money blogging with my blog, The Geriatric Dietitian. So this is The Geriatric Dietitian, and these are all of my streams of income. I love having multiple streams of income. They all add up. You make more money. And if something happens with one of those streams of income and it dries up, you are still making money. Your business is not completely reliant on one thing. So I make money through selling digital goods, eBooks. I do have interviews periodically where people find me on Google and they'll, they'll pay me to have some interviews. They're usually marketing companies, um, ad revenue. I have a course, um, on-demand webinars, affiliate sales. That's primarily through Amazon affiliates. And then I do some work with brands or companies, though not a lot. And I, I kind of grade these out because I used to do freelance writing and live webinars. I still kind of do live webinars, but not a lot. Um, and that's for other companies, not this, but um, I'm really focusing on doing more work for my brand than other people. So I started my blog in June 29th, 2019. It was my birthday gift to myself. That is my birthday. So I'm going to break down the timeline of my blog over a two year period. So I'm almost at two and a half years, but I'm just going to break it down to make it easy for you guys to understand. I think it's really easy to look at someone's end game and be like, how on earth am I going to get there? So I like breaking this down. So these chunks are, there's four, six months chunks, and these are my income streams and how I built them. So that last slide, I showed a lot of income streams, but I didn't build them all overnight. When I started my blog, I was already doing freelance writing and live webinars um, and then on-demand webinars. So that just means I would get like passive income people, income if people continued to come back and buy that webinar. When I started my website, I did have digital goods. <laughs> Over time, I started working with brands because they found me. About, gosh, um, seven or eight months in, I made my first digital good. It was an e-cookbook because my audience asked me. I had so much fun making that. I made another e-book and another e-cookbook. I started doing some interviews uh, with people finding me online. Um, I qualified for ads 17 months into blogging. Um, and then in this year, in January, I did sign up for Amazon affiliates. I feel like I should have signed up sooner, but that's when I did. And then I created a course for my website. So I pretty much am a quarterly kind of goal person. So you can see I kind of, you know, over time was adding these income sources and the orange ones are passive income. So those are things that you create once and continue to sell them. So, you know, I continue to sell these eBooks without having to go back and touch them, which is pretty nice. So just to paint the picture in a different way of those income streams, looking at both my active income and passive income, when I first started my blog in 2019, I was doing mostly active income to make money. I was working for other companies, a little bit of passive income. I'll show you those numbers soon. 2020, I added a couple income sources. 2021, I added a lot more passive income sources and got rid of some of those active income sources. So essentially, over time with my blog, I've been able to make more money with less time. So here's the numbers and I hope I can walk you, I made a different one, this one's prettier. I hope I can walk you through this pretty clear. These are the three month chunks to actually show you how much money I made each month and where the money was coming from. So first six months of the blog, I made a whopping $59, not a ton, but hey, it was my first passive income stream when it comes to like I was selling digital goods, so I was excited. The next six months I created a new product and so I ended up making $744 and that was because I made that ebook. 
Now, moving over to my third six month chunk, I was getting more traffic, which meant I was selling even more ebooks and I threw in a couple more in the batch. And so I made $2,000 in that next six month chunk. And then the final six month chunk here, um, I qualified for ads and ads are a really good source of income for blogs. And you can see that was like, you know, almost $13,000, but I continued to make more money through all of my income streams, including my digital goods, where the first six months I made 59 and then, you know, the last six month chunk here was um, $365. So I made $15,493 in that last six month chunk. And, you know, probably the next time I do this webinar, I'll have the next six months after that. But just, um, just to catch you guys up in the last four months, my blog has brought in $15,000 in passive income. I'm not talking about active income. This is just completely passive income. And so pretty much um, I've made already 100% in 66% of the time. So I still have two more months left in this year and have already kind of met what I made in the previous six month chunk. So I do want to add how people are finding me because those numbers might be like, oh, wow, that's like, how are you doing that? So my blog, I mentioned I started June 29th, 2019. This graph right here is my traffic on Google Analytics. It's just a platform that tracks my traffic. So the first nine months, actually, Google really didn't pick me up. It took me nine months, but then it started growing. I will say my traffic has gone down a little bit, but my income continues to grow just because I have more streams of income and having ads. So um, this is looking at the 24 month chunk of my blog. So at that snapshot in time, I was having 110,000 people coming to the website per month. Um, on Instagram, a little over 3,000 people. My Facebook group, a little bit under 2,000. Um, my Pinterest, this number sounds fancy, but that just means people who see my pins when they're scrolling, that, that doesn't mean clicks. It's, I think Pinterest just likes to show that as a fancy big number. And then I had a little over a thousand people at this time on my email marketing list for the geriatric dietitian. So here is that timeline again, showing the money. So again, um, at the bottom, this is showing you the income streams I added. First six months, $59. Next six months, um, 774, then 2000, then 15,000. And this is all passive income stream, so not my active income. Now, if you follow me at all on Instagram or Facebook, I do share a monthly passive income report. I'll share that in my next slide. Um, so if you guys wanna continue to see how this is working for the blog, I, I like to share these numbers because it's always fun to see what's possible. It's actually why I started my blog. I saw another dietitian doing it. I'm like, if they can do it, I can do. Let's let's do this. So here is looking at those numbers in a different way. Um, we talked about passive income and active income and how, you know, trading our time for money is what we're traditionally taught in school and how blogging can create an avenue where you can create passive income and make money while you sleep. So the geriatric dietitian um, blog, um, just I'm painting a picture for you guys of how much time that I would have to work to have made this money that I made completely passively over the last 10 months of this year. So the median RD salary, according to the Academy's Comp and Benefit Survey, is $33.65 per hour. So if we just do the math, so I've made $30,000 in passive income over the past 10 months through the blog, it would have taken me um, 908 hours roughly 101 hours per month and 25 hours per week to make the same amount of money. So that is time away from my family, time away from all the other things that I want to do. So um, it's kind of cool when you like flip the script and looked at it in a different way. So passive income offers you time freedom. You know, I was not working 25 hours per week. I did the math and like last month on my blog, I maybe worked like five to seven hours total in the month because over time, as you make money, you can use that money to make you more money. So like I'll hire um, a dietitian to write a blog for me, or I work with interns and they'll write a blog for me. So over time, I actually am working less and making more. So it gives you more time freedom. It gives you financial freedom, but then also clinical freedom, which just means that you get to do what you want to do. When we think of a traditional job, you know, there's certain things we love to do, but then other things that we're just, you know, we got to do because, you know, we're working for someone else's company when it's your own brand. You could, you know, obviously you got to pay taxes and there's certain things you have to do, but you have a lot more flexibility in what you choose to do or not do within your business. So this is my passive income report that I shared last month. And I think um, many of you saw this, um, which is why I chose to do this webinar because I wanted to kind of explain the big picture to you guys um, on how this is possible. So last month in my blog was the highest month of passive income and I made over $4,000, which was super exciting. And a lot of that came from ads because we are in the season, October, November, December is when advertisers pay a ton of money for ads. So that's why I'm making uh, a pretty good chunk of money. So. I hope that was helpful to see this big picture of how my blog makes money, but I'll tell you guys a little bit about what I've learned. 
I've learned through this journey that our greatest limitation is ourselves and our own mindset and what we believe is possible. You're either going to spend your time in your side hustle building your dreams or someone else's. When I first started, I was working for other people building their dreams where now I'm building my own. It does take significant investments to make money. And I'm talking investments of time, of energy, in some cases, resources, money. So it takes commitment. Now, when it comes to blogging, if you really do want to make money, you have to think and act like a business owner. You can't approach blogging as a hobby. You got to approach it as a business. <laughs> you have to be willing to be imperfect and take massive action. And I've also learned that there are limitless opportunities online. So my biggest discovery was that it was my mindset and my obliviousness to how to build my own business. They were holding me back from really like living my biggest dreams and having ability to make massive impact in this world. So I'm curious, what is holding you back from your biggest dreams and your ability to make massive impact? I just want you guys to reflect back, think, or I guess reflect forward. Imagine looking back two years from now and being in a place where you are achieving your dreams. You are making money. You are making impact. You are living the life you always wanted. Like, what would that feel like? And if that's something you want, it takes taking action now. So let's go ahead and dive in and get started. We are going to learn how to blog as a business, bringing in multiple streams of income on your own time from the comfort of your own home without seeing patients. I'm going to take a sip of my water. So this right here, I just wanted to present this concept. <laughs> this is a pyramid I made a while back, but it's the, it's kind of a pyramid of looking at where our dietitians when it comes to their blogging game. Um, we have some dietitians who are bloggers to be like an RD to be, they want to start a blog. They want to start creating streams of passive income, but they don't even know like, what would I even blog about? Or how do I even get started? We have some dietitians who actually have a blog. They hit publish, but they're still trying to figure out how do I actually get people to come to this darn website? We have some dietitians who actually are blog employees who are making money through their blog. So cool, but they're still working for their blog. They're putting a lot of time in it. And then at the very top, we have the blog boss. And this is the dietitian who has a successful blog with multiple streams of income. They, you know, they transition to where they're, you know, working less and making more money. Now, you know, moving up this path, if you are a blogger to be, you really have to learn like, what is your path and how do you actually build that blog? <laughs> if you are a blogger already, you need to learn how to grow your blog and how to build build like multiple streams of income. If you are starting to make some money, you got to figure out like, okay, I got to stay motivated, consistent. I got to surround myself with the right community so I can continue to have success, but then also automate, systemize and hire people. So you're working less. And even if you're at the top of the pyramid, you always have to continue to grow and invest in yourself. So I'm really going to be focusing on those of you who are bloggers and bloggers to be. So that's where we're going to kind of dive into things. So some of the biggest challenges when it comes to moving up the pyramid, especially for dietitians, um, number one, you don't know what you want to do, like trying to figure out what is that niche going to be, or how do you even make money blogging? Number two, you don't know how to do it like tech. Oh my goodness. How do I like have a strategy? Um, what kind of business skills do I need to achieve this? And then when you take number one and number two, and you combine it with the notorious perfectionism dietitians have, it leads to overwhelm and inaction. And you're excited one day of, yes, I'm going to blog and you don't. So these are some of the challenges to success. So I'm going to do my best to break this down in a way that feels like digestible and achievable. So I'm going to talk about three steps to start. We're going to discover, develop, and then we're going to do the thing. So when it comes to discover, that is like, you know, what you want to do. So learning what's, some, what's possible and uncovering your niche. Number two, developing, learning how to do the thing, <laughs> learn how to build, grow and grow your blog and act like a CEO and then doing it, um, overcoming what keeps you stuck and taking imperfect action. So we're going to walk through these three items briefly. And I mentioned after this webinar, I'm going to send you a handout, which has like a little checklist that'll go through these three things. So step one is discover, you know, that problem of dietitians, they're like, oh my gosh, I just don't know what I want to do when it comes to blogging. Our field is so wide, right? There are so many different things we could do. Some of you are experts in certain areas, but it's not necessarily what you're passionate about. Like you're, you're doing this for a full-time job and you're doing the best you can to like be very knowledgeable in that area, but you're like, I wouldn't want to blog about that. So, you know, the solution would be to first off, learn what's possible. What is out there? What are people doing? Discover your passion, really digging deep and discovering like, what is my niche going to be? Who am I going to speak? speak to online? What area am I going to focus on? Now, this can be a combination of what areas, like, are you really good at? What is your specialty? What are you passionate about? What drives you? But then also, what are those things that you're just innately good at and come natural to you? Those things that are, we call that like your zone of genius. So when, you know, you do something and it just feels so easy peasy, you're like, 
I feel like this should take more work to do this, or I shouldn't get paid for this because it's too easy. So you have to figure out what your niche is going to be and then pick your passion. So ultimately you have to make a decision and then take action. I will say, I think niches sometimes scare people and they think, oh, what if I change my mind? That's okay. You're not married to your niche. You can always pivot over time, but you do have to make a decision if you want to start. So I started kind of mentioning some of this already, but when it comes to uncovering your niche, it's a matter of looking at like, what are you good at? What do you already do? What is your specialty? And what comes easy to you? But then beyond that, what are you passionate about? Because some of you are working a full-time job that you are so grateful for because it pays the bills and it has benefits, but this is not what you would have chosen to do if you had another choice. So think about, again, like dream really big with what is the reason you became a dietitian? Like, why are you here? Why are you doing this? If you could do anything, what would it be? And then also we got to figure out like, what do actually people like want and need? So we do have to do some market research, which just means go ask people, go look online and, you know, just don't be afraid to niche down. So many people are like, I'm going to blog about nutrition. You don't want to blog about nutrition because you're never going to rank on the first page of Google. You have to get very cl clear on who you're speaking to. Cause most of us, we're not just ourselves too. We're not just going to go to a website online about nutrition. We're going to go to something very specific that meets our individual needs. So I want to know from you guys, let me know if you had a blog, what would your niche be? Go ahead and comment it in the, um, in the chat box and I will be able to see it later. And you can go ahead and write that down as we're chatting. So step two is to develop. So this is the part where you just, don't know how to do it. I always tell my kids, everything is figure outable. So I'm going to tell you guys that too. Everything is figure outable. We live in a day and age with, you know, Google, with courses, with coaches, like you can figure out anything. So don't, if this is something you want to do, don't let it hold you back. But the solution will be to actually learn how to build your blog, learn how to grow traffic and learn business skills. And I'm going to talk over some of this stuff really quick, quickly with you. This is going to be high level, but just kind of to paint the picture to hopefully break down some of those barriers you already feel about how am I going to blog? So I think the first thing I want to tell you guys about is how do you actually build a blog? Now, I feel like this is kind of confusing for a lot of people because we look at, well, I can make Wix, Squarespace, WordPress, but then even in WordPress, you have .org and .com, super confusing. Now, I do have a blog post on this. If you go to my blog, dietitiansidehustle.com, go to the blog section. I think I call it six simple steps to starting a blog. I probably have it later in the PowerPoint, but it, this breaks it down even more. Now, I recommend building what we call a self-hosted website on wordpress.org. And this is how it all pulls to, together. And I hope I'm painting a good picture for you guys. So when it comes to building your blog, I'm gonna use a house, an example of a house. The first thing you need is you need a domain name. That is your URL. For me, that is www.dietitiansitehustle.com, thegeriatricdietitian.com. Think of this as your street address on the internet. It tells people where to find your website. Now from there, you need to secure a website host. Think of a website host as the land where your website lives on the internet. So you've got your street address and you got your land, but you're not done yet. Next, you need what's called a content management system. Sounds confusing. That is just wordpress.org. So think of this as the frame of your home. This is the space in the rooms that your content will be arranged in. So now you have a bare bones house, but you want it to look pretty, right? So the fourth thing you need to do is select a theme. And this is where you select the look and feel of your website. So, you know, at this point you have this welcoming, beautiful home on the internet, but you're not done yet. You need to learn SEO, that is search engine optimization. I'm gonna talk more about that in a moment, but this is so important to make sure people can find you on the internet. Think of like old school phone book for those of you who remember that. <laughs> so from there, you know, you're still not done. You do have to plan content. You have a, it's a wonderful website home on the internet, but you need to be a good host and to continue to put out um, high quality content and post consistently. So I hope that kind of paints a good example of all of the moving parts because I know it can feel confusing, but I use Google domains for my domain name. I used, or I used to use SiteGround for my website host. My website traffic has gotten so big. I have switched to what we call like a boutique um, hosting site. It's a, I'm not going to get in the weeds, but um, I've recently changed, but I started all my websites on SiteGround. Um, WordPress.com is the content management system. The theme I like to use is called Astra. It's just a really nice, fast, good SEO optimized theme. And then learning SEO, um, you know, I'll tell you a little bit about some resources available um, in the future and then just continuing to plan your content. 
So when it comes to growing your blog, there are two ways you could do this. Once you have that website live on the internet, how do you actually get people to come to your website? Number one, you learn SEO, search engine optimization. Number two, by chance. Obviously, you guys probably know I'm not recommending number two, but I will say some people do just get lucky and their website gets found, especially like in the early days of the internet, but really not anymore. You, you got to learn SEO. If you aren't, you are just really wasting your time. You're creating amazing content. No one is going to see. So what is search engine optimization? This is from the internet. I just Googled it. This is the website that was most SEO optimized to tell us what SEO is. So search engine optimization is the process of maximizing the number of visitors to a particular website by ensuring that a site appears high on the list of results returned by a search engine. So there's a sentence. The key to getting more traffic lies in integrating content within search engine optimization and social media marketing. What this means as bloggers, we are trying to optimize our content to get on the first page of Google. That's what it means in a nutshell. So here's some stats about SEO. 93% of people actually go onto the internet through search engines. Now search engines lead to blogs. 90% of search engine users use Google. That's why I talk about Google all the time. Number two, they use YouTube, which is interesting. We don't always think that YouTube is a search engine, but it is. And um, YouTube is owned by Google. So again, we care about Google. <laughs> and this is the other thing too, is that 75% of people never scroll past the first page of Google. Think about what you do. If you search something in Google, you scroll down, there's 10 results on page one. If you don't see it, you probably go back up and you research your term, right? So we want to be on that first page. This is kind of a cool graphic that shows, they call it the click-through rate per ranking. So these are the first 10 spots on the first page of Google. 28% of people click on the number one spot, then 15, and then it just continues to go down. So not only do we want to be on the first page of Google, but we also want to be in the number one spot if we can. <laughs> so... I want to show you guys just this quick infographic I shared on Instagram a while back, but this is showing how um, SEO can work and the power of it and how it takes time to grow. But once it does like, holy cow. So with my blog, the geriatric dietitian in January of 2020, so it was six months old at that point, I had 713 sessions. Think of a session, like someone come to your website. I will tell you in that January, I was over the moon. I was like 700 people. I don't even know. I thought it was so cool. Then fast forward one year later, I was just at that point, I just mind blown um, 105,000 people coming to the blog, I'm like, holy cow. So that's the power of SEO is that you can bring in massive traffic. It takes some time, but it is worth it. So let's talk about some blog business skills because business is very important if we're going to treat our blog as a business and not as a hobby. So you need to make sure that you are thinking and acting like a CEO, the CEO of your business. You need to set audacious goals and be visionary. You need to have a strategic plan, meaning you got to know where you're going. You're not just pie in the sky, posting at random. You have to have a strategy. You have to continue to build up confidence and massive belief because it is a long-term game. You could, it's really easy to kind of lose confidence or think, oh, who do I think I am? What am I doing now? Nah, I won't do this anymore, but you just have to see it through to the other side of, you know, when success comes, because that's, it's really amazing. You have to be willing to invest in your business and yourself. And I talked before investment is not just money. It is your energy. It is your time. It is your, you know, your commitment, uh, the community you're surrounding yourself with. Now, this is the cool thing. If you decide to actually become a business, there's lots of really cool, you know, business tax deductions. I love being a limited liability company because of some of these tax deductions I get. Um, invest in yourself and your business. I mentioned um, be willing to take risk and imperfect action. So I'm curious for you guys who are watching live, we talked about some different barriers to getting started from the technology to the business piece. What for you is your greatest barrier for starting a blog? Go ahead and comment and let me know. So we are now on to step three of doing it. Now, if this is kind of the final problem that dietitians face if they do want to become bloggers, you know, we, we talked about like, okay, they don't know what they want to do. They don't know how to do it. Then we add in perfectionism. It leads to overwhelm and inaction. Even if you're really excited in the moment, you just don't move forward. So here's the solution to this. Um, and I, I'm really going to dig deep into this because I really believe that this is important, not just for blogging, but honestly for everything. The first thing you have to do is work on your mindset. You need to be willing to let go of perfectionism and take massive action, like massive action, surround yourself with a community that's going to help you reach your goals and dreams. So one of my business coaches, he'd said that with everything in life, it is 
80% psychology, 20% mechanics. What does that mean? 20% mechanics is the thing. It is being a dietitian. It's being a blogger. It's doing the blog work. The 80% psychology, that is your mindset. It's your belief that you can do it. It's pretty crazy, right? It's like such a, we always think that it's like 80% is what I do. And then maybe 20% is my mindset, or we don't even think about mindset. But I will tell you, the longer I've been in this business game, this blogging game, I've started realizing that it really is 99% mindset and 1% work. (laughs) Like mindset is so important. We absolutely have to work on removing our limiting beliefs. Um, You know, those are those beliefs that hold us back. It's those thoughts in our head that tell us this worked for them, but it's not going to work for me. Who do you think you are? Like there's these doubts that we all have in our minds. So we have to work on, you know, getting rid of them. And we all have limiting beliefs. They can be conscious or unconscious. Sometimes we don't even realize we have them until we start digging deep. We're like, oh, who knew? So this is a quote from Napoleon Hill. He shares, um, your only limitation is the one that you set up in your own mind. I was actually listening to this on audible when I was driving in the car, I had to actually pull over, pause, rewind, re-listen, snag that quote. Cause I'm like, that is so good. So when it comes to mindset, this, I feel like this sounds super cheesy, but I just, I really believe it to be true, but what you believe you will achieve. And this is positive or negative. If you think amazing things are going to happen and you're willing to do the work and not give up and, you know, redirect as needed you will achieve good things. If you believe negative things are going to happen, if you believe this is never going to happen for me, this is not going to work. I fail at everything. You're probably right. So it's really important. Those thoughts that we put in our mind, because what we do believe about ourselves and what we can accomplish, that's typically what the outcome is. So the best thing that you guys can be doing right now is working on your mindset because it will a hundred percent determine your success. And another Napoleon Hill comment, it's from a book called Outwitting the Devil. It sounds like a weird name, but it's an amazing book. It's all about like business. Um, Napoleon Hill says, be careful what you set upon your heart for it will surely come true. So these are two books that I recommend, Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill and Mindset by um, Carol Dweck. Amazing books. If you want to start working on mindset now. And then also here's an inspirational Mary Poppins quote, anything is possible, even the impossible. So I want to talk about expecting greatness. This is a concept by Myron Golden, who is an amazing, um, he's like an online business coach. He's, he's really awesome. So I want you guys, if you're like, oh my gosh, blogging sounds amazing for me. I want you to move forward expecting greatness. So expectation is really important because it's very much based on outcomes, what we think is going to happen. Now, if we think that something undesirable is going to happen, it's going to give us anxious apprehension. We're going to be like, oh, it's going to be bad. And you're going to be anxious about it. Where if you think something good is going to happen, you're going to have joyful expectation. You're going to be excited for what is coming. So expectation. If the outcome is undesirable, anxious apprehension, that's not good. We don't want that because anxiety stops us. It leads to us to be wasting our present energy on future outcomes. So I do want to address just really quickly on where that anxiety typically comes from, especially within our field, it's perfectionism. You know, a lot of dietitians wear perfectionism as a badge of honor. They're very proud that, you know, like I get everything right. I get everything done. I do everything perfect, but truly it is a weakness. Um, It leads to, I call it perfection paralysis. So we get stuck and we don't move forward because, you know, it's just not good enough. We have to have all of our ducks in a row. Everything has to be perfect before I could take my next step. But I want to tell you guys, and I want to give you permission that you don't have to be perfect. You do not have to know everything. And I want to encourage each and every one of you, even outside of blogging, just to strive for imperfection, recognizing that done is better than perfect. And if this is something that you want to embrace, I made a new badge for you. And it is (laughs) the imperfectly perfect badge. So we could wear that, wear that badge of honor to be, you know, imperfectly perfect. So when it comes to having the mindset to start, we want to make sure that we are not just busy doing work because we think we need to do work. We want to be very focused on what we're doing when it comes to blogging as a business. We need to create a um, very concrete idea of what our future will look like, a path, a roadmap. We need to be willing to forego perfection, let go of anxiety and ego. We didn't talk about that, but there's a lot of stuff in ego. Um, Take imperfect action and pursue your dreams relentlessly. So mindset, who is with me? Are you ready to let go of perfectionism and take action. Go ahead and comment me in the comments if that is you. I can't see the comments right now, guys. I think I shared that with some of you, but I can see the number of comments in the chat. And I I think, I think we got some yeses here. So I'm super excited. (laughs) I see the number going up. 
<laughs> okay, so we talked about those three steps to start. Number one, discovering what you want to do, learn what's possible, uncover your niche. If you're in a creative blog, what's it going to be about? We got to get very specific and clear. Next, develop, learn how to do the thing, <laughs> learn how to build, grow, and grow your blog, learn how to be a CEO. Next, you, you just got to do it. You have to overcome what makes you stuck and be willing to take imperfect action. So, how will you get results? Now we have two options. If you're like, oh my goodness, Katie, I totally want to blog. Um, the two options are number one, do it yourself, be a DIYer, or you can work with me. I do have an offer I'm going to present to you guys. And then we're going to get to questions and then do that drawing at the very end. So when we are done, I am going to email you this checklist. Now I will tell you, I think it's really important that you guys print out and do this today. Use the momentum of today to keep going. You know, you showed up today for a reason. Maybe you're looking to make more money so you can get back more time, live that life you wanted, or even just get back to like doing what you love for being a dietitian again. So, you know, think about what has gotten your way from pursuing your dreams in the past. Like, has it been a lack of a clear plan, lack of implementation, lack of support? Now, um, this blogging checklist is really going to help you getting started because it's going to actually have you reflect on like, you know, what are you good at? What are you passionate about? Like, what's your niche going to be? It's really going to help you to move forward. I do have some links here where you can learn about more of these concepts that we started. But um, next, I want to take a few minutes to go over my program. I talked about this at the beginning. So I know that there's going to be some of you who are on the call who are going to be a great fit for this program. So let me go over this with you. If you are listening and you're like hundred percent serious of, oh my gosh, I want to start a business based around blogging. Then I have a program for you. It is my blogging accelerator program. And this program is really designed for the blogger and the blogger to be. So not for dietitians who are already making money in their blog, but really for the people who are just kind of getting started or need some help. You can have no idea what you want to do. You can have an idea of what you want to do or a blog that's not making money. So who this program is not for, again, it's not for those who are already making decent income through their blog. It's not for anyone who wants to get rich quick. This is long-term game. <laughs> this is not for anyone who is not willing to be imperfect and take imperfect action. This isn't for anyone who's not willing to invest in themselves, not just financially, but of their time. And it's also not for people who hate writing. Like if you hate writing, I'm not sure if blogging is for you, but I will say if you like talking, you can talk into a microphone and have it like transcribe into written words and you can still be a blogger if you're like, I totally want to do this. There are workarounds and things you can do. But if, if you really hate writing and this just sounds awful, then it's probably not for you. So I mentioned this blogging accelerator program um, pyramid, but this is really the, the pyramid that I use for the program um, that I go through with the blogging accelerator program. Um, I'm, I'm going to go to the next slide because this really... Um, this describes the path that we go through with the blogging of accelerator program. And so what I want to focus on, because I don't want to spend a ton of time on this webinar on this, but I want to focus on the outcomes. Like what would you achieve if you went through this course in this program yourself? So when it comes to the blogging accelerator program, it starts with a two month course. It is eight weeks total. You're going to spend five to seven hours per week on this course. Now you will continue to, you know, create content. You have lifetime access to the blogging accelerator program and our online community, which I'll talk about in a moment, but this is what the first eight weeks are going to look like in week one. You're going to discover you are going to end up leaving that week with your very focused niche. You're going to have your brand and an understanding of business basics in week two, you are going to build the blog. So you're going to have a website live ready to monetize for those of you that have blogs. I do have um, a different module that really goes through kind of like doing a deep dive and audit to make sure that your website is ready for SEO week three, you start learning about how do you actually grow your blog? We learn SEO week four is where we uncover the gold. This is a um, concept of SEO where we do something called keyword research. We find out what are people actually searching online and how can we kind of strategize our content to make sure that people are finding us online. So in that week, you're going to have a list of topics to create blog posts on for the first year, if not longer blogging. In week five, you're actually going to create your first blog article. It's going to be live on the internet and you are also going to be creating more confidence and um, more time. Those are two things that get in the way for dietitians posting blog articles as they feel not confident and they also just don't have the time. So I've added some modules on like, let's get you some more confidence and let's get you back some time to do the thing you want to do. So you'll have confidence in creating more content in less time. Week six is the week of nurture. And that week you really begin to um, build your online audience outside of the blog. That might be social media. That might be email marketing. Week seven is the week of dream. You're going to leave that week with a list of products or services that you want to create as you build your brand. And then finally in week eight, at this point, you've like figured out what you want to do. You got a blog live on the internet, you know, SEO, you have an article live on the internet, you're building your audience 
you know the products that you want to sell in the future. Now you're going to have a plan. So you'll leave that week with a strategic plan moving forward with confidence, excitement, determination, and tenacity. So the program is made up of that eight week online course. I also have tons of tools, templates, and resources, pretty much everything I've created on my own blogging journey I give to you because I want to make this as easy peasy as possible for you. You have lifetime access to our Facebook community, which is amazing. <laughs> you have access to my beyond the nine to five coaching course. We're doing a raffle for that at the end of this, but you know, if you don't want to like have a chance of winning it, you can just get in the program and you'll totally have it. It also includes my dietitian coaching workbook and journal, the fast track blog builder course and workbook. This actually walks you through how to build a blog. It makes it as easy peasy as I can for you. We do have a nutrition blog directory for people who are in the program. We have uh, all of their websites featured on um, a directory on my website, Dietitian Side Hustle. We have monthly live Q&A calls. So even though you are doing the work independently, um, you have the Facebook community and you do have these live monthly calls. We have an affiliate program. So right away, you have your first income stream. If you take the program, you're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And you recommend it to a friend, then you make a pretty decent commission on it. And then we have an ever-growing bonus section. I'm always adding new content. So you have access to that. So the um, value, just one second, I'm trying to mute somewhere. There we go. So the value of the program is $16,997. And if I was to summarize this real basic on what is this program, it is designed to help you stop dreaming and start doing. It provides you step-by-step -step how to. <laughs> it provides accountability and support. It encourages you to take imperfect action and you will be building your dream and your brand. Now, I do have a fast action bonus. If you're like, heck yes, Katie, I totally want in, and you decide to join the Blogging Accelerator program today, then you're going to get two bonuses from me. Number one is you're going to get a 30-minute Zoom call with me. Now, this is a um, website review. I just realized it says bonus ends Sunday. Oh, that is today. Yeah, so this ends today making sure I put the right date. So um, pretty much what we would do is once you build your website, we would schedule time to hop on a call and I would do a one-on review of the website you build, provide you individualized um, advice and support. Now this one I'm really excited for. I've done this once before, but it was a $200 cash back bonus. So this is a $300 cash bonus opportunity. Let me tell you what the heck this means. So if you join the program, I want to partner with you to get the work done. I know how easy it is for life to get in the way and things to get busy and you just don't show up and do the work, especially when you have lifetime access. You'll be like, oh, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. So this is something that is going to provide you incentive to show up to do the work and you'll get paid to do the, to do the work. So I do have a $300 cash back opportunity. I got super strict rules though, because you got to do the work. I, I, there's going to be no excuses, no exceptions, no waivers. So you have to complete the program within eight weeks of registering. Easy peasy, five to seven hours per week. If you even skip a week, you can you know build it in and do two the next week. You have to complete 100% of the videos and Facebook assignments. You have to provide a written or video program review and then um, send me an email confirming, hey, Katie, I did it. And then I would send you via PayPal a $300 cash back bonus. And so who doesn't like, you know, having that incentive. So again, the blogging accelerator program, it is lifetime access to this program, which includes, it starts off with the eight week course to get you all set up for success, you know, tools, templates, resources, live coaching calls, all the support that you need to make this come true. So the program's valued again at $17,000, but the price to get into this program is $2,997. Now in a minute, I'm going to um, stop sharing and I will drop the links below for signing up. So that way those of you who are like, oh my gosh, I want in, you can sign up. Um, so there we go. So I'm going to drop it below and also in the emails that I'll send right after this, you'll have the link as well. But I do want to address to those of you who are on the fence, who are like, oh my gosh, Katie, this sounds awesome, but I don't know. So I do have an opportunity for scheduling a free strategy session. I'm going to drop that link too. But um, the other thing too, if you're like listening and you're like, oh my gosh, this sounds amazing. Maybe not for you, but for someone else, you could help me out by spreading the word and letting other people know about this program. So for those of you who are on the fence, you can apply for a free 20 minute strategy session with me. If you schedule this call today, then you will be locking in the bonuses of the $300 cashback bonus and website review if you decide to like join during our call. Now, we've got one week before the holiday week, Thanksgiving week, and I'm going to be off. So I don't have a ton of time for calls. So I am limiting these strategy sessions to the first three. So again, as soon as I stop sharing my screen, I'm going to drop the links. So 
three of you um, will be able to qualify for a free 20 minute strategy session with me and you'll be able to lock in those bonuses if you choose to buy when we speak. But if you're like, heck no, Katie, I'm ready to go, like you'll get those bonuses if you join today. So I want to share with you guys a little bit about what our bloggers are saying. I just got a couple slides on this, but this is Sunui who's in the program. And she said that the blog and accelerator program was a great source of support and information. She re recommends it for anyone who wants to see results. Grace shared that she really liked the checklist. I love checklists and that it was simple. Um, Maria shared that it gave her encouragement and kept her on track and it was what she needed to succeed. Um, Susie and Kim, when they finished the program, they just, you know, shared how excited they were to be done and to continue on their journey. Um, Ashley, when she finished, was super excited. And then um, Elizabeth as well. She shared it feels so good to embrace perfectly imperfect and have things done. So I just want to share with you guys my dream. <laughs> so my dream is I want to help dietitians become bloggers so that Every time someone searches a nutrition related topic online, it pulls up a blog written by a registered dietitian. So that two reasons. Number one, the public gets incorrect information. I think we all can agree there's way too much incorrect nutrition information online. And these people are spreading false information and making a crap ton of money. So I want the public to get correct information, but I also want to see the dietitian making that money because there is so much money to be made online. I, I want it to be you guys and not just someone who happens to eat food and is a nutritionist, right? So that is my big dream. After we are done, um, I mentioned there's going to be an email coming to you. We'll have the replay of this. It'll take me a little bit to like download this because it'll probably be pretty long. So you'll have the notes, you'll have that blogging checklist. I'll have all the links I've been talking about. So I do want to say thank you to you guys. And like, let's take over the online space and start treating blogging as a business. I, I'm just so passionate about this topic, which is why I, you know, I love hopping on a, on a Sunday to talk about it. So I am going to open things up for questions in a minute. So if you have questions about blogging as a business, go ahead and put them in the um, chat. We're going to do the drawing. One of you is going to win my Beyond the 9 to 5 coaching course. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to drop those links. And then we are going to, oops. Then we are going to, I'll answer the questions. Okay. So the first link I'm going to drop is for those of you who are like, oh my goodness, Katie, sign me up. I want to join the blogging accelerator program. So I'm dropping that link there. You can just go ahead and click on it. So it'll be in a screen so you can access it later. So remember, if you do join today, you're going to lock in a 30 minute call with me. And then also the $300 cash back bonus opportunity. You got to show up and do the work to get that. And then the next one is you guys might want to click on this one fast because I only have room for three. So this is an application to apply for a free um, 20 minute strategy session with me. If you schedule today for three of you, the first three, <laughs> if you schedule today, then um, you will be locking in those two bonuses if you decide to buy on the call. And if you don't, it'll be fun. We'll have a conversation and, you know, hopefully I'll give you some more clarity in what you want to do. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit more time to type in your questions and I am going to do the drawing. So here's how it's going to work. We have 19 people on the call. Now, I know we all have a little bit different view. If you're probably on I, like your phone, you probably only see me. But if you're on the computer, you probably see lots of people. So what I'm going to do is I'm sharing. I'm going to share a wheel because wheels are fun. So um, I'm going to do a little wheel spin. And whatever number this lands on, then um, hopefully I'm sharing the right screen. I'm going to make sure. I'm going to try this again. I think I might have shared this. Nope, I did. I shared the right one. And so whatever number it's on, I'm going to, from my view, I'm going to count that number and whoever we land on that is who is going to win my beyond the nine to five coaching course. So if I, if I would have time, I would have put in everyone's name. That would have been funner, but we'll do this. Okay. So let's see who the lucky number winner is going to be. Ooh, one. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, so the person right next to me is, doo -doo -doo. so I'm going to type in, it is Christy. Christy, yay! So um, Christy, I don't see your last name. I'm going to type in my email. And what I want you to do, Christy, is email me at katie.nutrition at gmail.com because I can't see your last name, so <laughs> I'm not quite sure who you are. So I want you to email me at that and yes, you Christy. <laughs> so, so, um, so go ahead and email me at that and I will um, get you all signed up in the program. So yay, Christy. 
the beautiful. So, yay. Awesome. Well, congratulations. And thank you all so much for showing up. So let's get to our questions. Okay. So give me one second. I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top and make sure I'm not missing anything. So awesome. Oh, it's so fun to see these comments. I think next time I do this, I'm going to have like another computer pulled up or my phone so I could see the comments because this is so fun. Um, Corrine, you can enable mute all setting. Yeah, I know. I need to figure that out because I have it mutes when people sign up, but then sometimes it unmutes. I'm not sure. Okay. Christy um, shares, it's amazing to see what's possible, right? It's so amazing. So let's see some of those niches. So someone cannabis. Awesome. We actually have a really amazing um, dietitian in the program who um, is in the blogging space and cannabis, and she is rocking it, but lots of room for people in these online spaces, um, fertility, pregnancy, um, gestational diabetes, fertility. I'm looking at the niches. Ooh, Janice would do addiction recovery. That is awesome. Rochelle would do exercise and nutrition, Alaya culinary nutrition, vegan nutrition, recreational athletes, simple budget food tips. Oh, look at all these beautiful blogs out there. So um, Lorena has a question. When you look at your Google Analytics, what are your highest ranking countries? Um, United States by far. Uh, United States, and then I believe um, the next, I think it's Canada. Um, yeah, I could pull it up and check. I just don't want to get too much in the weeds, but I'll pull that up. And if it loads, then I can get back to you. So let's see. So someone's interested in mental health, pediatric. Okay. So now we're going to, I'm just kind of reading back things so I can see what you guys are sharing. So when we talked about the thing that struggles, like struggles you have from getting started. I see there's some, um, Justine, the tech using WordPress. Yeah. WordPress. In my program, I do show you how to use it. Um, Kristen, um, getting started, waiting for Google to find me. Oh, awesome. So it sounds like Kristen, you've started. Um, tech, knowledge, nerves, time, time. Absolutely. Feeling overwhelmed where to start. Um, when it comes to time, I do want to mention I have a full-time job. I've got two kids, a husband, and have still been able to find time to do this. So it is possible. If you're like, oh my gosh, I want to do this. It is possible. Now, the more time you have, the faster you probably can do it. But I I don't know, in reflection, looking back, I'm not even two and a half years in. I think it's doing pretty darn good <laughs> for the time I've been able to commit. Um, so Marissa shares how to start also not feeling like content website will be good enough to work. Mm, I hear you. It's all mindset. I guarantee everything you have to offer is good enough already. Christy um, shares time, letting go of perfectionism. We got some tech, oh, confidence, perfectionism, technophobe. Absolutely. <laughs> how to write effectively. Oh, look at all of you who agreed to let go of perfectionism. I'm so proud of you guys. Oh, almost everyone on here commented me. Okay. So, um, so Justine asked, okay, I'm getting to the good questions now. So um, Justine asked, how many words should a post be? Now, um, that depends. There's a lot of things and behind it. Um, one thing is when I find a particular keyword, so I know I have a topic that I'm going to write my blog article about, what I do is I actually go to Google and I search and I see what's out there. And I look at what is the number one blog post? Like how long is that one? And so I look at what's already ranking on the first page of Google and how long are they? Then I try to make my blog articles longer. Um, I, I generally don't do any blog posts less than a thousand words. Um, I very seldom have crazy long ones. I have a couple, um, but in that case, I try to break them down into less, but I would say most of mine are anywhere from a, maybe a thousand to 2000 words are my average blog post. So Christine asked, how do you get backlinks to your site? So backlinks is a really wonderful SEO strategy. So I talked a lot about Google. And so when Google looks at all of the websites on the internet, they want to know which ones are the best. When they see really amazing websites, like the heavy hitters who are linking back to other websites, they're assuming if a good website's linking to this website, maybe it's a good website too, because no good legit website's going to like link to a crappy website, right? So backlinks, meaning my website, I link back to your website because I think this is a good resource for my people. That tells Google on the back end, like, hey, these, these websites that are being linked to are probably good ones too. So how do you get backlinks? There's lots of ways to do it. I actually get my backlinks by utilizing a program called Haro, help a reporter out. I signed up for this free platform and three times a day, five days a week, it's kind of intense, but I get emails from reporters who want quotes. Now, reporters are interested in nutrition and they know who dietitians are. They have articles where they want quotes by dietitians. So I, I don't go through everyone every day because no one has time for that. But when I have time, I will go into it. I'll do control F to look for keywords in my niche of geriatrics. 
and I will um, send quotes into reporters. And sometimes it's hit or miss, but that's how I've been able to get a lot of my um, larger backlinks, like from Eat This, Not That, um, Living Well, like a lot of the bigger websites. Um, other times it's from networking and building community with other people. <laughs> um, you can do it by doing guest posts on other people's blogs. Um, you can do it by um, even reaching out and building relationships with reporters. I, I actually have a really amazing relationship with a reporter. And when she needs something related to nutrition for all these, you know, brands she's working for, she reaches out to me, which is really cool. So I hope that's helpful. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. So Christy has a question. So Christy shares, if you already have a website with a blog, but it isn't in your niche, should you start a different one? with your niche name? Ooh. I feel like almost every answer I'm going to give you guys is going to be like, it depends. It's like nutrition, right? There's like no blanket nutrition statement for people. It depends on your individual situation. So I guess if you already have a website with a blog, I have a couple questions for you. It would be, you know, what platform did you build that on? Did you build it on a wordpress.org self-hosted or on another platform? How much traffic is already coming to that website, if any? Do you have any really good backlinks that people are linking back to you? Because that can really help with your page authority and help people see your stuff. So there's a couple things you could do. You can start from scratch and build a brand new website, or you can rebrand your existing website. Um, you know, I like the idea of having the name of your brand in your website, but you don't have to. So an example of that, my, my blog is The Geriatric Dietitian. That's the URL, thegeriatricdietitian.com. One of the people in the blogging accelerator program, her name is Angela Lago. Her website is her name, AngelaLagoNutrition.com. Her brand is the mental wellness dietitian. And so she doesn't have that as her, her URL, it's her name. So there's lots of different strategies on how you approach blogging. But I think the most important thing would be to, to be like looking at your current website, like what is, how strong is that website? Like, is it getting traffic? Does it have some strong backlinks? If it is, let's leverage that and kind of work with it versus if it's got no traffic, then maybe it's better to start from scratch and make sure that we're building a website that's optimized for SEO. So you kind of hit the ground running and, and doing everything right to start with. So Kareen shares, how do you control the ads on your site? So they aren't products that you don't support. So when it comes to ads on the website, you're working with a ad network. So think of them as a middleman. You have bloggers and you have advertisers. So I recommend what I call high-end ad networks. You can start having Google ads on your website from the moment you push publish. Problem with that, they don't pay well and ads slow down your website. So in order to gain traffic, there's lots of things behind the scenes for SEO, but you need to have a fast website. Like Google wants to pull up websites that are lightning fast, not taking forever to load ads. So when you first start, the goal is building traffic. Now my websites are slowed down because I have ads now, but that's okay because the ads are making me money. My website already has authority and I'm already like Google already sees my website as, you know, they, they rank me pretty well for, for like certain topics I'll rank within a week. So I've already built up that domain authority. So it's okay to have ads now. So um, I recommend waiting for a higher end ad network. Now all the ad networks are a little bit different. I feel like Mediavine, I love them. Like they are so amazing. <laughs> like they're so amazing. And a lot of dietitians do work with them. So what they do is they have categories that you can opt out of. So for example, if you are a, maybe your website is like a vegan website and you don't want to have like products that are selling meat on your website, then you could opt out of certain categories. Now I will say how ads work. Ads are based on the user. So, you know, when I'm on my computer, we know how like the social thing where it's kind of crazy, but like when I'm searching something, the computer remembers, right? When I'm looking on Facebook, when I'm searching on Google, sometimes if you're talking about something and all of a sudden you start seeing ads on your phone, you're like, where did that come from? It's, it's just because that's how ads work, right? <laughs> Depending on the settings you have on your devices. So the ads that I see on the geriatric dietitian will be different from the ads you see. It's based on our own search history and user history. So you can't have exclusive control over what the ads are on your website. If you use one of these ad networks, they're really based on the user. But I figure if someone comes back and they're upset about the ad they saw, I'm like, but that's based on your search history, not my website. But anyways, so that's kind of how they work. And I hope that's helpful. 
Okay. And, and for some people, I will say, if you really have products that you're like, I absolutely don't want this on my website, then, then probably evaluating our ads right for you. Maybe the best fit for you would be working with brands directly and, you know, having sponsored podcasts or maybe creating your own ads on the website from working with that company. So there's things that you can do outside of working with an ad network. It's just easy peasy. Okay. So yes, congrats, Christy. Thanks for emailing me. Oh, look, you were commenting. I didn't see that, Christy. So yours is WordPress. It's self-hosted, but the traffic sucks, LOL. <laughs> so I would say um, there's a website called, um, well, you can Google Moz Domain Authority, um, Moz, M-O-Z, Domain Authority, and go look up your website and it'll tell you your domain authority. And it's like a scale from like zero to, I forget, I think it might go to hundred, but I don't know any website that's a hundred, but it'll tell you kind of like the strength of your website. And if you have any backlinks to that website. So if you go look at it and it's like not ranking well, it's like, I don't know, it might not be worth your time to hold on to that. You know, if you decide to go a totally different direction. So let's see, who is this question from? Is this from Ginger. Okay. Can you recommend good source of access to scientific journal articles? Um, one might research a reference quote to be in their nutrition blogs. I use Google Scholar. You can just Google Google Scholar. And so this is, um, you know, if, if you're a student still, you have access to like really cool like search engines and like all these things where you could read all of this like peer reviewed literature. But what I use is Google Scholar. Now I can't read every single article, but I could read the um, abstracts and several of them I could read behind the scenes. So that is where I go for my, <laughs> that is where I go for my scientific journals is Google Scholar. So Jesse asked, how many blog posts should you publish per week? And does it matter when trying to build blog traffic. Yes, it definitely matters. So, you know, when I first started blogging, my goal was to create one really meaty, good blog article every month. And a couple things behind that. I burnt myself out. I think three months into blogging, I stopped blogging for a couple months. Cause like, it's that dietitian personality where I was like, well, every time I post a blog, it has to be crazy long. I'm going to make a YouTube video, amazing infographics. Like I had all these really high standards for myself and I burnt myself out, which is silly. Cause it's my own business. I could do what I want. So um, I will say in January of 2020, I kind of reevaluated. I'm like, why am I like creating these standards? It's my business. I can do what I want. So at that point I decided I was going to create two to four blog articles per month, minimum 1000 words. It just has to be good enough. Right. So I really changed my perspective in blogging. And that is when my traffic really started to grow leaps and bounds. Now I will recommend, um, I think that two to four times per month is kind of a good idea. I have a friend named Melanie Betts who just um, qualified for ads on her website. So now she's making amazing money through her blog and she was posting three to four times per month. So, so that seems to be a pretty good um, number, but they don't have to be like crazy, complicated, overly referenced scientific articles. Some of them can just be topics that you can write about in your sleep. Like sometimes we overcomplicate things, but I think two to four is a good number. <coughs> so I'm working on building a course right now and I was recording videos this morning. So I've kind of been like talking a lot today. <laughs> so I'm like, oh man, my throat. Okay, so Judy asks, how do you get qualified for ads? So you qualify for ads, it's based on traffic. So Mediavine, I keep talking about them. They, um, there's a requirement of 50,000 sessions per month. A session is like someone coming to your website. So it takes 50,000 sessions to be able to apply for Mediavine. Now they can accept you or reject you. I will tell you if you're a dietitian with good content, they're going to accept you. <laughs> like, I, I don't know of any dietitian who's been turned away. So, um, so really all you have to do is build up your SEO to get that traffic. It took me 17 months. It took my friend, Melanie, just about the same amount of time. So to qualify for ads, it's really about how many people are coming to your blog every month. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? And if I skipped over anyone's questions, feel free to let me know. And you could also unmute yourself as well if you want to ask me any questions. I love talking about blogging. Justine, is the traffic specific to quality? Um, is traffic, sorry, it was moving there. One second. Justine says, is traffic country specific to qualify for ad networks? Um, 
I think they mostly want your stuff to come from the United States because it really depends on where the advertisers are. So I don't entirely know the answer to that one. And actually I had pulled up my website because I wanted to see where my users are coming from. I think um, Lorraine had to drop off, but um, so my website has um, most of its traffic coming from the United States, Ooh, followed by the UK, then Canada, then Australia, then India. So that's over the last seven days. So the last 90 days. Oh, it's the same. So yeah, most of the people on my blog are from the United States, but I will say most people in their blogging, most of our traffic is going to come from the US. But when I when I qualified for Mediavine, I just was like, I've got 50,000 people and I gave them access to my data behind the scenes. And they didn't ask me to break it down by country. So next question, Jesse asked, do you have any tips for getting traffic from Pinterest or just focus on SEO? So Pinterest is a tricky animal. You know, when I first started my blog, I actually did a lot of strategy on building Pinterest traffic. And um, I, Pinterest has changed a lot, especially over the past year and a half um, it, to where it's no longer worth my time to, um, to focus on Pinterest. So for me, I focus on SEO. I would say if we were talking, if we were having this conversation two years ago, I would say like, you know, really lean into Pinterest because it really was an amazing source. And some people still do really well with it. I, have, I, I just don't have the time and energy to invest in Pinterest right now, but um, I'm trying to pull up my, my website to see where my traffic is coming from for the geriatric dietitian. Um, and that's really where I spend my time. So I'm gonna look, um, let me see. Oh, I can share my screen too. Oh man, I'm just gonna go back like a month-ish. That sounds like a good number, right? Okay, let me share my screen real quick. Okay, so I'm looking at my website and um, this is for users. Um, in the last month. So we can see that, and I know this is a lot of party, but we're looking at 81% of my traffic comes from Google. 12% um, comes from direct or none. So that could be people who bookmark my page or type it in directly, um, or they just don't have a source that it's coming from. 2.1% come from Bing. 1.28% comes from Pinterest. So that's pretty low in the scheme of things for me. DuckDuckGo gets a little bit. Yahoo gets a little bit. Facebook a smidge. And those are my primary um, sources. So, so that's why I really don't focus on Pinterest because it's just not for me the best source. And just from other um, experts in the field, Chrissy Carroll, she's a blogger who really like, she's like for me, the Pinterest guru <laughs> when it comes to dietetics. And she had a course I took all about, um, I think it was called PinSmart. It was all about Pinterest. And I took it and it was doing amazing, but then they changed everything. So all the strategies I was doing no longer worked. So I was just like, yeah, it's not worth my time right now. I'm just gonna focus on tried and true SEO. Okay, any other questions, guys? And if anyone has questions about the program too. Okay. I just checked my email and it looks like we've had two people who've signed up for strategy sessions or applied. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I want to schedule a strategy call, I'm going to drop the link again. We have room for one more person. So <laughs> just thought I'd let you know. Okay. So Rochelle, you're welcome, Rochelle. Thanks for showing up. I hope this was really helpful for you guys. I, I know for me, it's always helpful when I see like, what does this actually look like behind the curtain? What are these numbers? What does it take? Um, you know, what are the important things I have to do if I actually want to create a blog? So, um, so yeah, I hope this was helpful for you guys and I appreciate you all showing up today. Oh, I just see, I just got your email too, Chrissy. So I'm going to email you the details to get connected with, um, the beyond the nine to five course. Okay. Any questions? Like, I don't want to end it because you guys are still here. So like, are you here? Cause you have questions. Are you waiting to see what I'm going to say next? Um, you're welcome, Christy. I'm glad it was helpful. And this was fun. I'm grateful for all of you who showed up live. Okay. Well, I'm not seeing any more questions. 
I guess I'll throw in some plugs. <laughs> so if you're not in my Facebook community, I do have a Facebook group called Dietitian Side Hustle. And in that group, I go live every Monday at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. I do that for a reason. Like Facebook algorithms are funky. I feel like all the social media, they're always changing. So um, so I feel like when I go live, not everyone's seeing I'm going live. So I was like, well, I'll come live same Monday, like at the same time every week. So if you guys ever want to catch me live on Facebook, ask me questions. Um, even if you have a topic you want me to talk about, just let me know. I'm in the Facebook group live every Monday at 5 30 Pacific standard time. And I also have a podcast dietitian side hustle. Um, we have weekly podcasts, a lot of interviews. So lots of blog stuff. Cause blogging is obviously my favorite side hustle, but then also interviews with other people. So, so yeah, those are some ways if you want to continue to learn more, if you're like, Oh, this was amazing. Listen to the podcast, join Facebook. So thank you guys so much. Yes. Thank you, Sarah, for being all on and okay. I'm ending it. Have a great, have a great weekend guys. <laughs> we'll talk soon. Bye.